Well, in the second part of topic seven on offshore processes, we're going to talk about the small amplitude wave equations. Now, in this course, we don't have time to go into the full theoretical de derivation of these, these equations. So I'm going to skip over that quite quickly. You're welcome to delve into that um, uh, through your textbooks. The small amplitude wave equations, I'm going to talk about the background of those, um, the wave expressions which have been derived from uh, that background theory, and then um, the wave tables which are used to apply those expressions. Firstly, we conceptualize a wave um, it, it using a sinusoidal um, pattern. Um, and here are the key variables uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the wave theory. We've talked about wavelength already, the wave height, the wave amplitude uh, A, um, the still water level um, indicated here, uh, which for a sinusoidal wave is um, at half the, uh, the, the wave um, amplitude. Uh, and then we've got the, the celerity C uh, and the water depth D. And we can characterize the, the position on the surface at any point in time T or any distance X um, using this sinusoidal function, um, where A is the amplitude, K is referred to as the wave number, which is 2 pi on the wavelength, and omega is the angular wave frequency, which is 2 pi on the period of the wave. Now, the small amplitude or wave theory, which was developed by uh, Airy, um, so often it's referred to as the Airy wave theory, which is a bit confusing since we're dealing with water. Um, uh, but um, it uses uh, it's the Stokes wave theory, which applies the equations of motion um, and continuity with appropriate boundary conditions. It does assume deep water, so there's no interaction between the wave and the bed of the water, or, or very little interaction, um, and also assumes a small wave amplitude. That is, the amplitude of the wave is small relative to the wavelength and to the water depth. Um, and small amplitude wave theory is the first order approximation um, to these equations under these assumptions. And here are the wave uh, expressions th um, th that are derived from this theory. Um, so we have the same relationship as I showed before for the water surface, that's the sinusoidal function. Um, we have the velocity of propagation, the wave celerity um, here, um, which, uh, which is given by, um, in deep water, given by gravity times the period divided by 2 pi. In shallow water, it's the square root of gravity times the water depth. And that should be familiar to you from uh, the open channel um, module, where we calculated Froude number, if you remember, um, which was the ratio of the flow velocity to the wave celerity, velocity on the square root of GD. Here again, we see the celerity of waves in shallow water is the square root of gravity times water depth. The wavelength. Um, and, and so on. Uh, I'll come back to these equations in a sec. We can't um, solve these equations explicitly. We've got to solve them um, using numerical methods. Um, and the simplification of this that engineers frequently use is the wave tables to, uh, to solve these equations. And the procedure we use is for a given wave period, the period tends to be a constant for a given set of waves, uh, we calculate the deep water wavelength. So if those waves were in deep water, that's what the wavelength would be, L naught, and we can calculate that using gravitational acceleration, times the period squared divided by 2 pi. From that, we can calculate um, the, water, the ratio of water depth, D, to the, um, the, the deep water wavelength, D on L naught, uh, which is in this first column here. Um, the, the, the rows keep going up over here, so on, 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 down, on down this column over here. And from that, we can get um, the various other variables we need to plug in to the wave um, expressions. If we go back to those wave expressions, we can see um, the various terms here um, uh, in, the, in the equation. So we can calculate then the velocity of propagation, um, the wavelength, the horizontal component of the orbital velocity. What is that? Let's just go on a couple of slides and I'll explain that one to you. If you're a particle of water in this wave, you don't move along with the wave. That's just energy propagating across the surface of the water. A particle of water 
goes up and down, right? It doesn't actually move um, uh, horizontally with the wave at all. In fact, if you look carefully, what actually happened is it's an orbital motion as the wave moves. Um, and so this, um, a particle has uh, velocity, it varies in its potential energy and pressure, it varies as it moves around this orbital pattern. So this is the transfer of energy um, moving and propagating across the water surface. Um, and so um, we have these other terms here, the horizontal component of the orbital velocity, that's the velocity of that individual particle um, at a distance x and at the point time t, um, it gives an equation for that horizontal uh, velocity and that's the vertical component of the orbital velocity. It's also possible to calculate the pressure, um, the energy um, density, so how much energy per meter cubed is in the wave, and the wave power, that's watts uh, per meter along the wave. Um, and these are important terms in terms of the, the kind of damage that a wave can do.